morning everybody. I toast to you and all you do. I hope you're having a fantastic day or evening or more, more, mm, morning whenever you're seeing this. We are going to talk about the full moon and the astrology going on currently and the energies that we have. I do want to first say one announcement that is very exciting. We have ticket sales for Untamed coming up on March 10th. So if you are looking for a great four-day camping festival to go to, Untamed is amazing. You can find more information at untamedfest.com. And it is just a great family-friendly four-day activities, fun. Uh, last year I participated in the Highland Games, which was a lot of fun. My first ever log toss, so now I've been practicing. I can't wait to go back this year, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. All right, anyways, so... That's very exciting. Uh, plans are underway for all of that. New music lineup. Just it'll be a fun weekend. Family friendly. Vendors. All kinds of stuff. Um, so check that out. And so if you are interested in something like that, it's in Bailey, Colorado. It's a beautiful piece of property. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I encourage everyone to come out and check it out. So with that being said, um, I guess another couple of announcements is we are doing tea at the store every other Friday for the full moon or dark moon where we will be having this conversation in person and we kind of go over we have little handouts that we give out um, I already wrote notes all over the back of my email. I don't waste paper uh, but <laughs> so they're little handouts and we go over a lot of the things that we talk about through these videos we also serve tea and have snacks uh, I just finished making some banana bread so if you're interested in joining us for that that's in downtown Greeley and we'll be doing a seed germinating class soon, and we would love everyone to come out and join us for that as well. More on that. Um, check out our Facebook page, uh, which is the Hidden Gym Co. Greeley. So, with all of those announcements being made, oh hey, you know, I barely say this, I, I don't think that I say this in a lot of my videos, but don't forget to like and subscribe and like, come back and check things out. But now let's get on to the full moon and the astrology that we have happening currently. In this energy that is going on so we have some major conjunctions that I feel can be kind of disruptive in ourselves now when you look at the astrology that's going on as a whole you really see the overall theme is about healing is about really stepping out of this victim place and stepping into this role of healing and seeing that your own unique amazingness is amazing and that that's what you need to step to the table with this isn't about conforming to someone else and doing whatever it is that we've been told to be doing um, this is about really being true to yourself and who you are and allowing growth of that part of yourself and really stepping into that however these conjunctions that we have right now and the squares we have two t-squares um, we have a grand kite we have some really big things kind of going on where everything is very involved and some of these angles are a little harsher than others so the first big conjunction that i want to talk about is mars pluto and venus so mars and pluto became conjunct at zero degrees aquarius on like i think the 14th or the 15th right around valentine's day um and then venus shortly thereafter i think on the 19th kind of joined in and so we have like a, we have a very disruptive energy here and that pluto and mars come together really bringing out these motivations to bring to surface your deep dark passions to bring to you know all of the secrets all of those feelings your motivations those deep things and also to seek out what is other people's motivations and what is their deep dark secrets and mars really is like let's do this and then when venus comes in it really highlights our relationships with other people so you might have had some disruptions in your relationships you might have really felt one partner or both partners like the struggle for control or this idealization of freedom and where you sit on that balance and 
in any kind of relationship, but especially romantic relationships, you see in social media and across the lands <laughs> this debate about control and submissive submissiveness and um, like where to sit on this line in a relationship and who should be dependent and how you should be dependent and you shouldn't be dependent or whatever. There's all kinds of influences saying and telling and, and putting in their two cents. And I guess I'll put in my two cents here and I might be biased, but I feel like this is probably the direction we should be moving in. But a relationship of any kind isn't about control and it's also not about freedom. It is about striking a balance right in the middle where you are working together as a team and you both want to be there and you both want to be a part of that and you're both dedicated to making sure that this team succeeds and that you find this success. And if you're in a situation where control and well, control and freedom, that kind of balance that if those are the things that are coming up and you're like, oh, they're very much controlling me, I want more freedom or I'm giving them too much freedom and they're taking advantage of it and there's just like this, then you need to really, this conjunction, Pluto is really going to be like, hey, let's bring all of those passions, let's bring all of those secrets, let's bring all of those truths, let's bring all of that to the surface. Let's talk about this. And Aquarius is... I feel like one of the more honest, and by honest, I mean honest like the energy of tear, like the energy of the just God who is so honest that you're like, oh my goodness, that's a little too much. I, wa I wasn't ready for all that. But it's in a place of this is reality. This is how this is. This is where we are. We need to wash away the things that we don't like, and we need to step forward. And when you come into these relationship control and freedom and, and this line. Pluto and Aquarius is really like, okay, wash away your idealization of things that should be. Now let's see what really is. Let's really evaluate your feelings and let's step forward with pure intentions to make the best of this relationship or this situation and step forward in a healthy productive truthful place and so really that should be the goal and if you're in a relationship and you're finding that there's some serious control issues or you're finding that <clears throat> maybe someone in the relationship is really seeking more freedom they're like oh you can you don't let me do what I want to do uh it's time to sit down and say, okay, well, let's really talk about our true feelings here. Let's talk about what our goals are. Let's talk about what our intentions are in this relationship. And let's really find a good place to step forward where we're both feeling honest and heard and we have struck a good balance. Because anytime Venus and Mars are conjunct, that's they are calling for this balance, like true balance, balance of light and dark, male and female, you know, whatever opposites that you want to talk about they are really calling for that even and especially in relationships and so there's always a balance that you strike and this conjunction is really calling to that and like I said that can be kind of challenging because your feelings are involved and you want you want to be heard and you want to be felt and you want to be loved so you really, it, it, can, it can just tread lightly. Like, I know I should have released this video just specifically on this conjunction before Valentine's Day, but just keep that in mind as you think about the things that happened over the last week in your relationships and really where you sit on that. And that it really is time to sit down and have those good conversations if you haven't already. Um, the other conjunction that we have right now is the Sun, Saturn, and Mercury. And this can also be a tricky conjunction and it's happening in Pisces so it can really bring up this watery emotional hmm, truth and wisdom so we have 
Mercury bringing in its wisdom, its higher perspective. It is that thought words, actions like we've talked about before, but very much this like wise perspective. And Saturn is really calling on you and your position in society. And are you doing a good job? Are you healing? Or are you continuing to carry through with the emotional traumas that you have? Are you stepping forward as a victim? Or are you stepping forward, healing, moving forward, growing, and, you know, putting that best foot forward? And so together, the three of them really uh, are really bringing in this focused, because we have that Mercury energy. So it's this very focused, clear thinking energy that is highlighting your personal growth that is asking you, are you responsible for your own words? Are you responsible for your own feelings and your own emotions? Are you holding that responsibility? Especially highlighting that emotional, spiritual well-being because the sun is obviously at the full moon. The sun is at opposition to the moon and the moon is in um, Virgo right now. So it's really calling on to that emotional well-being that help your your holistic health, so spiritual, emotional, physical, mental, and really bringing that in. So this, again, washing away these illusions and really calling on you to say, hey, this is the truth in my reality. This is how I feel. This is what I need to do to heal. This is what I need to do to step forward. And that, again, is a really hard, that's, really, that can, that's just hard, especially when you have a lot of trauma. Um, I highly recommend going and seeing a counselor or a therapist, um, find someone to talk to, write it out in a journal. If you can't find a ther want whatever it is your hold up on therapy, write it out in a journal. I mean, just start writing down your feelings. Really think about where your feelings are coming from. We have a lot of resources at our fingertips. You can go out and seek things online. You can find different resources. You can't, there's just so many things available to you. And we are really being presented with this ability to heal and step forward, not only from our own trauma, but from like generational trauma and, you know, global trauma. Uh, the um, Pluto entering into Aquarius and Saturn entering into Pisces, these two big transitions, they don't, they haven't happened for a really long time. Both of these planets move really slowly for Pluto, particularly it's been 200, over 200 years. So they move very slowly. They are in their sign for a very long time. And these big transitions really call to us, specifically these ones where Saturn is in Pisces, calling to us and our place, like our emotional well-being and how that fits into the world. It's really calling on that. Are you being a victim or are you healing and stepping forward and, and being a part of the society that is growing? This emotional evolution that is being presented to us. And then simultaneously we have Saturn or Pluto entering into Aquarius, which is really calling on those deep motivations. You know, are we really focused on this top down structure where one person is in charge up here telling us what we should be thinking? And I don't necessarily mean the president or the queen or king or whoever, I'm, you know, um, social media is a really big influence in our world. And are we allowing these voices that are at the top that are just spouting out whatever they're spouting? Is that really where we're getting our authority from? Or are we thinking about this from an internal place? Are we really thinking about how am I healing? How am I growing? How am I presenting the best self forward? And how am I holding not only myself accountable, but the people around me accountable? And that we are all stepping forward in this better place. And what are we all doing to make these changes? So it's, these are big transitions. And then in those, we have these big conjunctions and they are really calling on us to find success through accountability, through healing, through growth, through truth and stepping forward in those places. And when we remove the blockages that we keep that we hold on to because somebody else told us or because we're holding on to this trauma or whatever it is that's keeping us from moving forward. Once we start to let those go and we start to heal that and we start to step out of that, we will achieve long-term success. You will find the things that you're looking for. This isn't about short-term, easy, quick fixes. This is about really healing and really stepping forward 
and achieving these big goals. Um, sometimes it's funny when I watch videos where they're like, are you achieving spiritual enlightenment? I'm like, I wish it wasn't so foofy, but you can achieve that kind of enlightenment. You can step forward on your soul's path of, you know, being, your conscious self's being, whatever, whatever words that you want to put there, however you want to say that, you know, let's not get caught up on semantics, but however you are growing as an individual, this is a good thing. And you, this is that time. And we have another big conjunction. So Chiron is exact conjunct to the North Node. And this conjunction in Aries, and it's going to happen, it's going to stay conjunct until we have this solar eclipse coming up. And so this energy, again, is very much about healing and allowing you to be who you are. Chiron was a minotaur, a minotaur I think is what they're called, a half horse, half person, centaur. He was a centaur who you know stood up for his people he was like we're not we're not less than because we're different we just bring something different to the table and that's just as amazing and that is an energy that's really being pushed for you to develop in yourself like see how you bring value to the table see how you are this amazing beautiful person who has the ability to bring something amazing to the table and all you have to do is bring yourself to the table and that's it. It's not even about being something that you're not or trying to reach out and, oh, I got to do this. But no, it's just you. And that's all that's needed. And allowing yourself to heal and be okay with who you are as a person and growing into that beautiful self and allowing that self to develop and Again, this conjunction, it has been kind of together for a while, but now it being exact, it's really pushing it. It's no longer just like a subtle nudge from the universe. It's like, okay, it's time to heal. Um, so we're going to look real quick at the chart before we go on to the rest of the things that are going on. And you're going to see again and again them circle back on the same kind of healing, transforming, growth, stepping into this new role and away from being a victim, stepping out of your trauma, stepping away from this past like I just wish I had a better way to say it because I think when I when when people hear that you're in this victim role, it's really triggering. And people hear that, oh, you are putting yourself in positions that are making you a victim. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that at some point in our lives we have all been a victim. And when you're in that place, you create coping mechanisms, you create habits, you create beliefs that keep you safe and make you feel okay. But in reality, in the long term, are those things really helping you? Is this really helping you to stay safe or was this just something that you did in that moment because that's what you needed right then? And now it's time to step out of that and not to be a permanent victim and not to hold on to that role that was necessary when you were in that position. And so I really do wish I had a different way to say it other than that, but just know that it is not that you choose to be a victim and therefore bad things happen to you. I'm saying that we have to step out of that feeling and we have to step into this healthier place of being confident in who we are and being able to shine the beautiful light that we are all right <coughs> excuse me so we have the chart here and you see we have the moon and we have this big kite going on we have this square t square happening here we have a t square happening up here and we just have a lot of mm, challenging questioning angles and intersections things going on i mean the grand kite is very beneficial it is very much like a, a gentle nudge because we have that big so the the challenging part about it is that the conjunction of the sun mercury and saturn are the point of the grand kite so you can see we have that and then we have the moon we have that is trying to jupiter and trying to cirrus and then those are trying creating this grand trine then we have its minor trine with these sextiles and it is however it is a very beneficial loving encouraging positive 
energy that is really like, let's go fly a kite and find success because it's there, you know. We just have to get there. The point of this kite is a hard is a hard reality check of that Saturn Mercury Sun conjunction calling us out. Really, are you stepping in? Are, are you stepping into this true, beautiful self that you are? And do your words, thoughts, and actions align? Are you, you know, stepping into this good place in the world? Are you healing emotionally so that you can step forward, interact with other people in this beneficial way? So, with all of these together, um, just reading over, I got a lot of notes on this. I just want to make sure we cover everything. So, Jupiter really is this expanding energy that is bringing good luck and optimism and really encouraging you for special spiritual growth. It's in Taurus, so this is also like foundational growth, and it is really calling to that. And then on the other side of that, being the moon being trying to Cirrus, is really calling on, you know, are you learning the lessons? We harvested all of these things, and now we need to take that and we need to use that to fertilize for the future. And are you doing that? Are you really taking your bounty and putting it to good use and continuing this cycle of growth and allowing all of these changes to come and, and happen and, you know, be in this amazing place of you because you Again, all of this comes back to you growing and healing and being that true person that you need to be. So it's this grand kite is really loudly calling to each of us to focus our energy on our own emotional well-being, on our own healing, and asking us to transform and step forward and saying, yes, I can do this, and I am healing, and I am going to be disciplined and organized and find a really good approach and I'm going to use the support that I have around me. I'm not, you don't have to do this alone. You have the people around you. And allowing that divine feminine energy that we get from the moon and Cirrus, all really expanding out and saying, you can do this. Let's succeed. You've got the support of the universe. And even though this is a struggle, you can still do this. Uh, and so it's really positive, like step forward and through, step forward through this struggle. Um, one of the other YouTubers that I was watching, she was talking about if you only focus on the negativity of all of the destruction and all of the truths and all of the like hard things. I mean, Uranus has really shook things up and it is still shaking things up because it was just square. Uh, yeah, it was just square to it but it was you know we just have a bunch of things going on just looking uh and so it's it it can be a very challenging time but you don't have to focus on the challenge you can see the support that you have you can see the growth that you have you can say hey i've learned all of these lessons i can see where these things happen i can see where I have grown and changed. I can see where I need to grow and change. I see the changes I need to make. I see the strong foundation that I have and I'm ready to step forward. And this is really that like wind in your sails to do that and to step forward and allow that change. Um, it's really heightened right now by Neptune being sextile to that Pluto Mars Venus because Neptune and sextile to Pluto, as we've talked about before, is this really pioneering spirit encouraging you to step forward. But as this conjunction with Mars and Venus comes together, it's really motivating that transformation and for you to find balance between, you know, your self-love and your love for the community, between you and your relationships, between all of your own desires and passions and how that fits into the world around you and really encouraging you to step forward. Because if we realize that each, if each of us brings our pure passion and the things that are beautiful and that we're really good at and that you know, are unique to us and we bring that to the table, there's like a 90% chance, 99% chance that what we're doing is bringing benefit to the community. And then the community as a whole is going to be able to step forward into a better place. Um, this is, 
let's see. So now let's talk about some more of the challenging aspects that we have because we have two big T squares. We have uh, Neptune square Vesta square Juno. And I know that these are dwarf planets, but Neptune being square to them really brings out this like calling to their higher wisdom and to the wisdom of Juno and Vesta, which is these very devotional, feminine energies that really call on us to, you know, ask, are we showing our commitment to our own spiritual faith? Are we showing commitment to our, our communities, to our families, to our, our position in the world? And, um, and to our, our own mystical spiritual calling. So Neptune square Vest, Vesta specifically really is asking you, are your, you know, are, what are you devotional to? And this is one of those weird things that we don't always think about because we don't, Devotion is not something that I see or feel like we talk about a lot in our world because most of us have moved away from Christianity where your devotion was supposed to be to Jesus. Um, now, when we shift away from that and we are no longer giving our devotion to this external source, it's telling us how to act and telling us how to be, we kind of lose perspective of what devotion is and what we're giving our devotion to. And if you're spending hours a day doing something, that's what you're giving your devotion to. So if you are spending hours a day scrolling through TikTok, watching mindless videos, or you're scrolling through whatever, and you're you're reading all of the, the comments on X, and you're going through everything, and that's then that's what you're showing your devotion to. And so with this square, we're asking, like, where is your devotion going to? What are you spending your time on? I recently was like, I am spending too much time watching the whatever podcast <laughs> in my shorts. So then I went and found some shorts from like some archaeologists from India who are showing all of these ancient temples. And I'm really interested in this. It's really fascinating to me. I found a bunch of shorts on um Oh, I almost was able to say it out loud. Gibliotech. Oh, I'm not going to be able to say it. Anyways, other ancient archaeological things. Like, this is what I need my shorts to be filled with because this is what I want. To, this is what I want to be learning about. This is what I want to be enlightened by. This is what I want my devotion to be going to. Not watching about just... I mean, sometimes, you know, you like a little drama in your feed, but <laughs> it's getting a little crazy. So you have to switch where your focus is and this square and then also on the other side of that Vesta is square to Juno which is really asking you about your spiritual self and your obligations to others and you know asking you to seek higher ideals I know sometimes when we talk about Juno or Hera um, and the mythology that she has she sometimes takes on this weird role but in the roles that she teaches us what she's calling to is like don't don't get caught up in all of this drama. Like, what are you really dedicated to? What is really important to you? What do you really need to step forward are? Because when you get caught up in the drama and the scandal and the whatnot, then it ends up taking you to that place. And it doesn't bring you up. It brings you down. And you see that happen again and again in the myths surrounded by Hera or Juno. And that is the lesson that it's teaching you. It's teaching you that if you bring yourself to that level, then not only are you bringing yourself down, but you are encouraging that. What you're focusing on is what's going to manifest. And so if we see and ask ourselves, what is it that we are putting our focus on? What are we giving our devotions to? What are we really manifesting by our focus? And we ask that with Neptune's higher perspective. And then we are really honest with ourselves and we see that, okay, what am I giving that? And then be honest with yourself and allow that healing to happen. Are, are you allowing your own spiritual development by focusing and giving your devotion to something that is helping you grow? 
Or are you focusing your devotion on something that is actually bringing you down and causing you to manifest things that you don't really want in your life? And again, like I said, some of these questions are really hard. Like that's a hard thing to really be honest with yourself about. You know, I love watching drama unfold in front of me on YouTube. Like, oh, it's so fun sometimes. And then I realize, I'm like, wow, I just watched five shorts or all of my YouTube suggestions are all these really drama filled, toxic things. Okay, it's time for me to search out some good because there's just as much good on the internet as there is bad. You just have to look for it harder because it doesn't show up in our feed as often. Because the internet is dedicated to getting more likes, to spending more time there. And we are fascinated by things that disgust us, that we don't understand, that are scary, that are different. And, you know, are full of drama. And so if that's all you're focusing on, then maybe that's what you're manifesting in your life. Or maybe you're not manifesting in your anything in your life because all you're doing is focusing on that drama on the internet. Or how, you know, everybody is going to have a different, pers a, a different position. And this T-square is calling on us to do that. We have another T-square that is calling on almost the exact same thing. Because we have Mars, Ves Mars Venus, Pluto, square to Peles, which is square to the Mercury, Sun, Saturn. I need to check this real quick because I feel, yep, yep, that's what it is. It's just, oh no, it's the moon. I'm sorry. See, in my crazy, I knew, I was like, that doesn't make sense. Anyways, so take that back one step. It is the moon that is square to Peles, which is then square to the Mercury, Sun, uh, Saturn conjunction. And so when we have Peles and the moon square to each other, they are, it's really shining this light on your own motivation. Please don't tell me. No. Oh, I'm not sure if it was recording for that. There might be a weird thing. Uh, anyways, so... <laughs> uh, Peleus and the moon and this conjunction are all really calling on us to... Are we focused on healing ourselves? Are we focused on stepping forward? Are we focused on this... Where is our focus on this uh, desire for free will and our autonomy and our place in the community and where this all kind of comes together? So again, this is calling on you to step forward from this really great place of healing and amazingness and allowing this growth and change to happen. So really, I mean, if you were going to pick a mantra for this full moon to like sit out and say, it really is, I am in perfect health mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Really finding this good balance where you are healing from your traumas, where you're stepping forward in a good place and on a strong foundation of truth and integrity and good intentions and growth and not being so consumed by what other people are telling us that we need to do or carrying on this role of a victim or superficial anything and and are you really stepping forward and are you healing and growing and that this energy is all here for you i keep saying this we are in this big transformation time the universe is like a warm hug that's like from that grandma who also whispers it in your ear like here's reality and now you need to step forward and really do this. And I really encourage everyone to sit down and journal or go to a therapist or find something that really helps you and heal 
and allow yourself to step forward as that beautiful self that you are. Bring your true self to the table and you'll really see that the people around you are like, that's amazing and I love you for that and I support you in that. And that those are the people that should be in your community and the more that that grows and the more that everybody is stepping forward in this healed place where you know the people around you support you and are there for you and they're not judging you in this bad way and you can all step forward healing, we will see change happen globally. We will see change happen in our homes and our houses and our communities and everywhere. We just have to step into that. We have to stop holding on to this idea of control and it's somebody else's fault or somebody, you know, and realizing that the only thing that I have control over is my own reaction to a situation. And the only way that I'm going to step forward is if I step forward knowing that I am reacting in a way that is best for not only me, but for who I am as a person and who I bring to the table and how I want the world to perceive me and then how I want the world to also treat me. And I know that's a lot, but when we step forward is these good places, in these good places as good people who are just trying to be decent, amazing, beautiful people that we are, it will be there. Like it's all that, all that complicatedness will just seem to kind of go away and be like, wow, this is actually really easy. Cause I just stepped forward as who I was and I was accepted by these people who actually appreciate me and I am able to be myself and we are able to work together and to create this community that then reaches out and goes further and and it can be this amazing thing so yeah I think that that's really I mean that's where I want to leave all of you I want everyone to realize that you are an amazing person and that you can heal from the traumas that you have suffered and endured and that you can step forward as an amazing person who brings something amazing to the table and that we can create this amazing place that is not full of lust and greed and superficial nonsense, but that is full of love and compassion and kindness and, and knowledge and wisdom and all of these beautiful things that are there. We just have to, we just have to step on to the other side. <laughs> So with that said, I toast to all of you. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I will see you all very soon. Many blessings.